Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here on Ravenport. We are going to carry straight on from where we left off in the last episode. So let's get to it. And all of the small fields and that. And I was kind of thinking it might be quite cool to try and do a series on that old map if there is a converted one. And that could be quite a bit of fun to go and do. If people would want me to. I mean, that would probably come under the, um, the approach to the series that I'll be doing once we finish doing all of this. Uh, once we've done this one and the next one where I um, do a, a, a monthly vote on which map we go for. So, kind of thinking that that could fit in together quite nicely on there. Anyway, we've almost done this bit and I just need to bring... We'll, we'll bring in a couple loads of these. I'll unload this one here. I've got four bales over there. That one's about to finish up now. It ain't going to be long now. Right, I'll leave those there. What is it doing? Like, honestly. Ah, at last. It's finally decided to stop fooling around. I'll start you up. So it's 55% full. It's 11,000 litres in that one. I dump that out there. And as soon as that one is off the back, like that, I can then fold that and I can fold that. There we go. And then... Right, I've thought about this, and I've thought about this most carefully. What do I do with everything that is left? All the machinery that's left. We've got all these cotton harvesters. And I'm going to be uploading this save file. So I will get rid of... Mo I do get rid of most of the mods that are in a save file. So that it makes it a little bit easier for you when you go and download it. Because, And also it's easier for me because i got to list all the mods. So that you make sure that you have all the right ones. Um, there aren't many mods that I've used in this. So th there's only a couple of mods in here and I'll get rid of them. And things like the Big Bud and stuff like that, I will leave those in and then you can use them. I think I've already gone through and gotten rid of most of the stuff that I want to get rid of in here already. And I will leave the Egg Palette one and I'll provide the link for that as well. Because it's not, as far as I remember, the Egg Palette that is on the Mod Hub. It's a different Egg Palette mod, if I remember correctly. Uh, so I will make sure that I include the link to that one and the wool pallet one so that you can do all the stuff with the egg and wool pallets. Because otherwise you, you sort of, you're going to be missing out on that. That's like the, uh, the whole point of this map is those egg pallets, isn't it? That's, that's one of the big things with this map. I know that some of you have already taken over the uh, original time lapse map and have gone and done a whole load of work on that one, which is absolutely awesome. Um... So yeah, I'll leave I'll leave a lot of it, and I'll put the the links. Um, I put the name of the ones that are on the mod hub. You will need to go search those up and then include them. And then if there are external mods, I provide a link for them, so you can go and hunt those out. And it does make life a little bit easier for everybody involved. Uh, I think those two fertilizer spreaders down there are Stevie spreaders, although I don't remember. I don't remember if I use Stevie ones or not. If they are Stevie ones, then I'll delete them because um, you've got to go through his Facebook page to get them. Not everybody has Facebook. And also, I've only sort of, I only provide a link to his main page and then I leave it up to you to go through and sort them all out. So I will remove Stevie mods just to make it a little bit easier. And then you can sort of decide afterwards if uh, you want to go and hunt out the Stevie mod or if you want to leave it. Um, that's probably the easiest way to do that. Just back this one up here. But yeah, the, the Hagenstedt, that's, uh, uh, it's been a really long time since I was there on that map. And it, I'm, I'm just sort of thinking it'd be really cool to actually go and, and do some stuff on there. Because as it's been such a very long time. And I've not been onto any converted maps. And so I've, I've not seen that map being played. I've, I've not done anything to do with it since FS13. 
And that was a very, very long time ago now. I believe it was around about 2013 that that was released. Although I could be wrong. <laughs> um, and yeah, I like I did see a conversion, I think, for F17. But I never actually went on the map. I never used it. Um, it may even have been converted and put onto the mod tab. There definitely Beyond Home was put in F17. And I did like that map. I did like Beyond Home. I had a lot of fun there. But we spent a lot of time on it. So I wasn't in particular rushed to go back. Uh, but I thought it could be quite cool to go and do the Hagenstead map. Even if it was for no other reason than to do a series. But, um... And it wouldn't be sort of a voted for series. I would run that series exactly how I used to play the game myself. So I would do it in such a way as to, as quickly as possible, get through the Hagenstedt map right up until sort of the, reach the point where and how I was playing that game myself. Which was basically every single field bought... All the small fields were turned into grass production, and then all the bigger fields had everything ploughed out to the very, very outside edges. Although grass production back in those days was done a little bit differently. Um, I'm just going to leave that one there for now, because we've got all the other cotton stuff in the fields. Um, but yeah, they're like putting everything out... Um, right out as, as much as I possibly could and then I sort of did it solo with two combines but they I'd increased the harvesting speed of them ever so slightly and massively increased the capacity of them and the capacity of trailers and, and stuff like that and sort of solo farmed it so it was kind of like overpowered Stevie mods um throughout the entire FS13 Hagenstedt map and I mean it worked really well I, I used to have great fun doing that because it meant that I didn't have to spend hours and hours and hours doing a single harvest. I could do... Usually I could harvest the entire map. If I settled down for an evening of gameplay, which would have been anywhere from two to four hours, uh, I could usually do a complete harvest in one evening and be well on my way with doing all the planting and everything as well. And that, uh, that, that was sort of what I aimed to do, so that I had a bit of variation in my gameplay. That's... That's what I was looking for, was variety in my gameplay. So, being able to do it like that was a real bonus for me. Um, so, if I was to do... If there is a Hagenstedt map that is out there that is, like, you know... Well, it, it's got to be reasonably well done. Um, but there is a version of it for FS19. I would seriously consider doing a series like that if that's what people wanted me to do. So, you have to get into the comment section and talk about that. Would you want me to do that? And I will um, see what I can do. If, if there is such a map, I'll see what I could do with that. That, that could be an interesting uh, little series to do. I don't know how long it would run for, uh, but it could definitely be quite interesting. And right, I want to come over this. Actually, I, wanna, I don't want to go a shortcut over there. I want to go around this way. Um, Next thing was, yeah, I was talking about the machinery on the map. So I would leave, I'm, I'm going to leave all the machinery. You're going to have the least machinery on here. And we're talking, the, the, there's a lot of money involved at the moment with the leasing of all the cotton harvesters. So I'll leave it all here. And I'll be interested to find out if anybody decides to continue on with doing cotton harvesting on this map. Or if you decide that seeing me do it once was... More than enough cotton torture for you, and you, you, you're you not going to do it anymore. Right, we're going to go... Oh, we've already got cotton module selected. Let's turn that one off. We want to turn the auto loader on. How much is it going to do? I suspect that we... I think it's just going to be three. One. Yeah, it is. It's three. That's it. <laughs> we can only put three cotton modules on here. That is it. So, we're going to want something that loads up cotton modules... So I bring those back round there, and I'm going to put that one. You know what? Actually, I'm not going to park straight. I was thinking I'd just park right across the road, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go to there like that. So we've got one load here. Now, is this one... This doesn't have road train capabilities. It's a bit disappointing. So let's stop you there a second. And we're going to go down to the shop, if I can. 
I did mean to do something about that one. I may, I may not. I'm, not, I'm making no promises at the moment, but we want to go to the shop. We want to go in here, and we've got auto load equipment there. It's just that one. It doesn't have a rear hitch option for it, though, so there's nothing that we can do there. Uh, back... The auto load pack. There is another auto load pack, but I don't have it active on this map. It's a bit of a shame. I should have thought of that, really, shouldn't I? Never mind. Right, so we want to go to... I don't want a wheel load of this. I want a telehandler for this, I think. And I'm going to go with the Manitou. I'll go with you. Bye. Yes, okay. Now back out of there and back again. And then I want to go into there. I want to go over to this way. I want to go to Telehandler. And I want to go with the Bale Fork. I'm hoping that one will allow me to pick up a cotton module with it. So I'll buy that. There. Back out and... Right, yeah, we'll, we'll just go with that. Where is it? It's over there. We'll just go with that. We'll drive this one up to those cotton modules and then we can start loading them up onto the trailer. Right, there we go. Now, in order to make sure that this works properly, I'll jump in here a second and I'm going to unload that onto the trailer. Like that. Ooh. Uh, wait a minute. Right, that's loaded. There, and then unload onto the trailer. There's a fair bit of weight in those. See the way that it sort of plonked the trailer down? So, it's already unloaded on the trailer, but apparently cotton modules aren't... Si oh. Well, that's entirely disappointing. I've got these cotton modules here, but apparently they're not being fastened onto the top, like... Um, I put the straps on and the, the, they're just going right through the straps. So does that mean I can't pick them up? That's 20,000. I can pick that one up there. But I've definitely unloaded them onto the trailer. So I was hoping that I would be able to put... Extend that one out a bit. I was hoping I'd be able to put these on top like that. There. Right, well, I can sort of, but it's not allowing me... Like, if I go here, turn on... Yeah, all I can do is turn it on, so it's, it's already loaded. Like, I don't have an unload option. And if I go to put the straps on, it just puts them underneath. They, the cotton modules don't get strapped into place, which means i got to go... Very slowly and carefully, or we're going to end up dropping these cotton modules. I'm, I will see if I can put six cotton modules up on here, but we can't secure them in place. Which is bitterly disappointing to me. But, I mean, if we can put six up on here, that would be great. And then we can see what sort of money we get from them for selling them. That one's not a full module, but that's all right. I don't want to put all just completely full modules. We'll, we'll put a mixture on here. And we'll sort of see what it's like. Bring you up. There's a lot of weight on this module. There is a lot of weight on these. they swing swinging my telehandler around quite ridiculously, to be honest. There. There we go. Right, we put that one on. Okay, that was... That was... What was I doing there? And I'm, I'm, really, that I'm not. I'm not even sure myself, and I'm the one that did it. Right, let's try that again, then, shall we? We we'll bring that one over here, like that. Right, put that one down there. That's a little better. And. Right. Let's try that then. That's, that's a little bit better. That's pressed up against the other one. Still not entirely great, but it'll do for now. And then we'll pick... Oops. Let's just 
bring the boom in a little bit. We'll pick this last one up. We'll put that one on the back of the trailer. The only other way I could think of doing this is if we were to like put them long ways on and try and shove them up. But I don't think that's going to work either. I'm not sure that we're going to get this track, this uh, this truck and trailer all the way down to the bottom without it tipping over. Um, of course, we got we can go a longer way round. And then we can avoid trees, can't we? Because that's, that's going to be another big issue, is uh, trees are going to be getting in our way. And they are going to want to sweep these off. Let's uh, just do that a minute. There. Oh. Right, that's, uh, that's a very unstable load. I'm not convinced that that's going to be... The, I, I don't think this is going to work. I, I really don't think that this is going to work. We've got all of this cotton here. <laughs> that is quite the load. And unfortunately, yeah, it doesn't really do anything. Now, if I was to auto-load this now... I suspect that the other three modules there, they would fall down onto the trailer. But I don't really want it to do that, because that sort of feels a bit like cheating. So I'm just going to do that right there, and I'm going to get a screenshot. Right, there's my screenshot done. And we're going to slowly make our way down to the cotton mill. Let's have a look on the map a second. We want to plan this route. So I think we need to go along the road over to here. I don't think we should be coming down this way because there's too many trees up against the road. I think it's going to cause us trouble. I think we need to go all the way into town, down around this way, down here, and then into the spinnery. We're only going to attempt this once, and then once we've done this, whether we get there or not... Um. That's going to be it. I'm not going to sell the rest of the cotton modules. I will sell these six. How many more have we got there? There's something that I could do. We, we could count up the rest of them a minute. Let me do that a second. There. Right. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen more cotton modules here. Another seventeen of them. So, when you get hold of this map, if you do decide to take over this map and do a little bit on it, you've got 17 modules of cotton there. Some of which are completely full and some of which are half full. And you'll be able to take those down to the cotton mill and you'll be able to sell them. So, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to take this nice and steady. You know, I'm thinking that we ought to have our beacons on for this and maybe even the flashes as well. Uh, yeah, multiple flashes like that. And what is the current price for cotton? Is it a good price or not? It's on 3952 right now. It's, it, it's slowly increasing. So we could just sort of get down near there and then let the price increase until it gets to maximum. And then we can sell it out once it's sort of reached its maximum. And then there's one more thing that I want to do. I'm, I'm sort of... The reason that I'm not selling all of the cotton modules and um, I'm sort of rushing this along is because I want this to finish on a... Sort of roughly at a set time. You've got... Uh, it should... Well, if my calculations are correct, this should be Monday... Uh, is it Monday the 29th? I think it's Monday the 29th for you. And this should be our final episode. Once I've done this, i got one more little thing that I need to do, which I said that I would do. I promised that I would try it, and that is to do with the small baler. I've got the small baler ready, and so we just need to purchase the small baler and then go and try this out. I said that we would do really small bales. I haven't done a one litre bale. I set it to a five litre bale, because I figured that was probably small enough, um, just to be able to test what's going to happen. Oh. Right, make sure there's... Right, there doesn't appear to be any sign of the train coming, because if that comes down on top of our trailer, we are in big trouble. So now I need to get round this corner here. Slowly does it. Slowly, slowly does it. 
Right, that seems to be working. So far, we're doing all right. It's very top-heavy. It is sort of um, swaying from side to side a little bit. Very much aware of that, but we, we seem to be doing okay with it so far. Bring this one on down here. And then we will stop just outside of the cotton mill. We will fast forward time until the price has stopped going up. Then we will sell these and then we will do our little bit with the baler and then that's it. We're done on this map. We are all finished. I will save the game before I do the stuff with the baler so that those of you who want to take over are not going to be left with uh, hundreds of small 5 litre bales on the map. Which I can imagine would be an extremely frustrating thing for you. Now, this is the corner I was a bit concerned about, was whether it was going to lean over too much, but it seems all right. So the only other issue that we've really got, the rest, these so far, it, it seems to have been all right, is getting into that sawmill, uh, not the sawmill, in, into the cotton mill over there. Because, yeah, see those trees there overhanging? The ones up there, I think that would really have caused us some problems. So getting into there, this may cause us an issue or two. So bring it to this point, right here. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to leave this here for those of you who would like it. Although that auto load trailer is an external mod and I was going to get rid of that one. Um, I'll include the link to the auto load trailer and then you can decide whether you want to use it or not. And then that one will be up to you. So, and I'm, I'm going to save the game right now. Well, so that's what I'm going to. That's what I was just wondering about. So I'll save the game right now. So this is the point where you will pick up your save game file. And let me just go and have a look in the garage in here a second. We'll have a look, see what mods we got. That one there, we're going to get rid of that one. I'll sell that one right now. That one's gone because not everybody's got that one available. I know that a lot of people don't have that one available, so we get rid of that one. The that one's just on the. Mod hub, so that one can stay. And I've already gone through and done this, I think, didn't I? So we've got all of these egg pallets. I'll make sure I have that mod included. And then these aren't mods. These aren't mods. Uh, those two are... There's just two mods there, and they're on the mod hub. That one can stay. That's on the mod hub as well, the toolbox. And then we've got these walls... Those are on the mod hub as well. You can either include those or not. So I don't need to worry about anything else. All the stuff is on the mod hub. So we'll come out of there again. We'll go back and I'll save the game again. So that you don't have that Mahindra in there. Here we go. Right, we're done. That's it. This is your save game file. If you would like it. Now I'm going to speed up time there a minute. And we're going to have a look. Look at that money going up. Okay, that's going up a lot faster than I thought it would. Didn't actually expect it to be going up that fast. We, we kind of need to wait for a, a minute or two now. It's currently just coming up to 2 o'clock in the afternoon game time. And the money is, seems to have increased ever so slightly. Oh, uh, It's beginning to slow down now that we've gotten just above 5,000. So we're just above $5,000 per 1,000 litres. And there, it's now really slowing down. So we'll run this until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. That should be... Yeah, that's that's really started to slow now. 5,000... Oh, there we go. Right. Now I can slow it. Ooh. Slow that right down like that. And there you go. 5,045 per 1,000 litres. So we now will go up this ramp, and this is the only bit that I'm a little bit concerned about with the stability of our load. Is it going to make it? I'm hoping it will make it. Really, really hoping. It seems to be all right. Of course, the next big question is, will it actually just sell properly on here? Oh, yeah, it does. A hundred thousand... $100,000 per bale for full bales. Uh, one bale here that it's... Oh, there we go. And there's the last one. Right. That is incredible. A full bale is getting $100,000. So it is a lot of work to do cotton, but it does seem to be worth it. There's another 17 bales up there. Not all of them. And if you said that there was two of them there that were part bales, how many cotton harvesters do we have? 
I can't remember now, so I'm going to go to least items over here. We got, uh, right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight. Eight. I got eight of them. It would be an easier way to do that if I just went there and had a look, and it tells me I got eight. Right, so one of them we left full, and I think there was another one that I stopped working with when it had a full cotton module as well, although I can't remember. So that would be six partial cotton modules, and we sold two of them. So there should be four partial cotton modules up there, and that means that at 15 o'clock in the afternoon, on the day that you get your save game file, you go and sell the cotton modules. Four of them are half full, so it's anything up to almost 100,000. And then the other 13 modules that are up there, you get 100,000 for each of them. So you got 1.3 million, and if you said half for each of the others, you got one and a half million dollars worth of cotton up here. All right, one, hang on, let's go through to that one there. 1.5 million dollars worth of cotton right here. So, yes, the cotton does take a while, but it would appear that certainly on easy settings, it's definitely worthwhile doing. Now, the final thing that I wanted to do on this map before we pack up this series is I want to go into here and I want to get our baler. So you can see they both look exactly the same. That one's 521 litres of bale. This one is 5 litres of bale. This is the new one that I want to get. So I'm going to buy that one. Yes. Okay. And we are also introducing a brand new tractor. And this is one that Patreo Gracemark has done a lot of work on. Converting it and tweaking it and making sure everything is absolutely tickety-boo and wonderful on it. The S-Series Sour Skittles. Now, if you watch the live streams, you will be familiar with the um, tractor that we've got that is known as Skittles. This is the Sour Skittles that he's gone and done. He's given me a personalised number plate. I've got my logo on the back up there. He's got his logo there on the side. But look at the work that has gone into this. So we've coloured the main tractor. He's done that in orange colour. Um, we can change the rim colours if we want to. So we could go with a, a nice yellow on there if we want to. We'll go with yellow for today. Um, engine set up 350 horsepower. Uh, we've got 400 horsepower. And we've got the bonus of 1,337 horsepower. He's also done a lot of work to balance this one out. So that the weight and everything is good for it. Um, I believe... He set it so that the twin wheels work best. Wide tyres and weights. Wide tyres, wheel weights, standard. But as far as I know, he's done all of his tweaks and adjustments and everything to fit this one with twin wheels. So we're going to buy this bad boy right here. $327,000. And we're just taking a look at this because he's put a lot of work into this one for me and he asked if I could uh, just introduce this at the end when we do a little bit of silly playing around and I said yes but what I also said was that if I like it if this one like if, if it appeals to me personally I know that not everybody likes the the tractors like this not everybody likes skittles from our um series that we do but I said that if I like it, if it's something that appeals to me, then I will be using this. I think we'll go with a Deutz green like that, because it's close to a, a like a class type colour as well. Um, if I like this tractor, then I will be using it quite a bit in the new series that we're going to do um, with the um, sort of uh, the large scale everything. Now look at this bad boy here. This is absolutely fantastic. It's got a top speed of 46 miles an hour. That's awesome. Yeah, and it does go up to the top speed. It's got a nice bit of acceleration on it. It's pulling around on the corner. It drifts a little bit. He did say that there may be a couple of tweaks needed, so I may have some updates on it um, at some point. Uh, he'll sort of keep an eye on how it's performing and uh, tweak things accordingly but right now this is what we've got and honestly it looks and sounds pretty cool 
I'm wondering if the pressure, like, the engine sounds like it's under load through the whole thing. But I'm wondering if that is in part because of the... Right, we'll load that one onto there. I'm wondering if that's in part be, because the tractor, is, uh, he's gone and just did the actual weight of the tractor as well. So that it's heavy enough to be able to pull things. Oops, would help if I did that. Uh, it's, it's, so it's got the weights under it to be able to pull things like the large scale cultivators and things like that that uh, you would use with the all, all of the big equipment so if this one performs well and so far it seems to be pretty good i love the speed on it the speed is fantastic we will be using this in our large scale series it's not going to be the only one i'm using i will only have one i'm not going to have a fleet of sour, sour skittles this one's called I'm not going to have a fleet of Sour Skittles tractors. I'm going to have just the one. And then the rest of it will be all like the, the fairly... We'll go for our normal sort of fairly realistic approach. But with, you know, corners cut where we can that I don't think are too ridiculous. But honestly, so far, I am loving this tractor. Really, really loving this tractor. So I'm going to unfold that one right there. And the first go with the hay that is in the field right here. This is going to be done with sour skittles. We start that one up. There we go. Like that. I haven't changed the infeed speed on this. And there we go. I kind of expected this. I did kind of expect this. When I did the very end of my series in FS15 I did that on the higher hills map and that one launched the bales out the back right that was the, the, the very last farming simulator episode I did in, in FS15 on the higher hills map so you can go back and you look at the old um, sort of play series um, and you will see the higher hills one there. Right, I'm going to leave that one there a second. I'm going to go to you, like that. Unhitch that tractor, and I'll go up here. We'll just see if it makes any difference at all. But yeah, in FS15, it didn't push the bales out the top of the baler. It pushed them out the back of the baler. So when you had a small tractor on, it literally just catapulted you across the map. And it was so much fun. It was so cool. This... Yeah, you get a lot of bales, but honestly, it's a really, really underwhelming experience, isn't it? Just having the bales do that out the top, it's a very, very underwhelming experience. It's it's not a, it's not a thing that you sort of think, oh, that's like it's like really hilariously funny and it's amazing and it's really cool. Um, honestly, that's just like, uh, yeah. To be honest, I'm a bit disappointed with it. I was hoping it would sort of work a bit more like a, a, a bale catapult where... Or it was a, a bale cannon is what it was. I mean, we were literally being catapulted across the map. So much fun. It was so cool. But this this is absolutely not going to do it. It's, it's definitely not. Um, oh, that's, it is chucking out... that There is the occasional bale that was just chucked out the back of the, the, the bale just then. It was sort of shot out the back. But for the most part, it's coming up the top. Now, I don't know if that's the way that it's done. I don't know if there's, like, a way that a collision could be included on this to make it um, properly propel the bale out the back of the, the baler rather than out the front. But, honestly, that isn't what I wanted to see. A bit disappointed with that. Right, well, you, you can stay there. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to worry about you. But Skittles over here, Sour Skittles, is a very cool-looking tractor. I'm really liking this bad boy. And it's got a nice top speed on it. So we're just going to go up to the field at the top. There's one final thing I'm going to try just before we go. Because we've already got the machinery up there in the field. So let's have a look and see if we can drag some of that machinery around with this tractor. And it sticks to the road very well. I'm doing 46 miles an hour going up around that corner. And it sticks to the road like glue for the most part. Corners like it's on rails. It really does. It corners like it's on rails. And if you're under 18, you should have no clue what that reference is all about. Uh, let's 
go in here like that. And then up round that way. Yeah, it, it does slide a little bit. But, I mean, you'd kind of expect that with the weight of the track that's on here or it's supposed to be on here. Um, you would expect it to drift a little bit when you go around the corners quite sharp. So there's no surprise on that bit at all. I'm, I'm not in the least bit surprised that it's drifting a little bit. And that is the cultivator that we want. So we come up to here. Good braking, stopping power on there right from top speed down. And we back up here. We grab that old flexi coil right there. 1,337 horsepower. Right, that is... And it's pulling it out at this speed as well. So the next thing I want to do is I want to get this completely unfolded as I'm traveling across the field. And then once it's done, it's complete unfolding. Then I want to lower it into the ground while we're at full speed. Which... Okay... I didn't expect it to drift like that. I, I, I kind of want... Kind of want it to stay. But not... I'm going to have to stop. I'm going to have to stop and go and sort of... Straighten up a little bit. Right, let's try that again. Okay. Back up to full speed and then I will press V. So we're about 46 miles an hour and... In the ground like that... Slows it down pretty quick. And then we're away at our standard nine miles an hour. Doesn't seem to have any problems with that. It always struggles going round a corner. So we will turn sharp with that one and then we can let it go on again. I think there was a little bit of lateral drift just then as it went round the corner. The cultivator pulled the tractor sideways just a little bit as it straightened up. We'll have a look at that again. Seemed, didn't seem to be anything there that time. So what I'll do now is if I just lift it up and we'll go and test. We've got a little bit of a hill over here, which is a good test point. we go and see what it's like working on that hill. We're going up the hill towards it. So I think that this tractor could be a very good addition to the next series. And lower that back in again. Like that. And up we go. So it's pulling up the hill. It's pulling very, very nicely. It's wheel spinning a little bit. But honestly, there's not much wheel spin. There's not much drift going up the hill with the biggest of the machinery. That does seem to be a pretty good performance there. So the, the weight of the track, and that's something that I found when I was doing my really, um, like, my ridiculous, um, ridiculous unrealistic series in FS17. Um, I adjusted the tractor to be able to pull the really big stuff, and the, the first problem I found with it, the tractor was too light. It wouldn't do anything. It, was, it would just sit there and wheel spin. So you have to, ah, here we go. This is what I want to find out. Right, we're going up a really steep bit. It's not quite heavy enough to pull the thing up the hill. Although I don't know if it's because it's not heavy enough or it's because it doesn't quite have the power. The front wheel is spinning. Now, all, all the wheels are spinning right now. So, steep ground like that. Definitely struggling with it. But, the, I mean, the whole cultivator is drifting sideways right there. We pull that. We'll twist right round like that. And then I'll straighten up like that. Seem to be any sort of lateral sideways movement on there. It's an amazing tractor. This is genuinely an amazing tractor. I'm really, really impressed with this. Absolutely brilliant tractor right there. As it, it, it literally will do everything that we're going to possibly want it to do. Now, there's one other thing that I just want. I just suddenly thought of this. Like, the other tractors that would have the kind of power that we've just demonstrated right there that's a 500 horsepower tractor that one's four hundred thousand um, dollars now if we put that's 550 and that costs four hundred and forty thousand then we go to you you start at 492 and you go up to 646 that's half a million uh the challenger over here that one goes all up to 646 that one's just under half a million uh, we'll have a look at the case as well. We can see that case quad track, 700 horsepower, just over half a million. 
And then we've got the big bud over here. This one's got no alternative options other than the wheels. That's 1,100 horsepower. It's an old one. That's 417,000. So I would say in order to achieve the correct balance, this one is only the engine setup upgrade to put us up to 1,300 at 20,000. I would say that needs to be an additional 200,000, not 20,000. That would be sort of in order to balance that and have it balanced along with the other tractors of a similar kind of power. Although this one does outpower all of them, admittedly. But there, there's 25,000 there for that engine setup, pushing it up to 400 horsepower. So we go to 322. And this one here is actually a little bit less of an um, upgrade and that's pushing it all the way up there. I personally think that if we were to have that at 200,000, then we are spending out an appropriate amount of money for the horsepower that we'd be getting in. And for those of you who don't really like the idea of having the tractor artificially overpowered like that, at least we are paying out a fair price for the horsepower that we're getting. Because I would like to, I'm going to use this in the series, but I'm aware that some of you may think that it's a little bit um, too unrealistic. So at least if we pay a fair price for the horsepower we're getting, I feel that would be a good compromise. Um, we're only going to have the one, but this is too good a tractor not to use. I mean, look look at this. This is thing of absolute beauty, and I really love the fact that we got Frithgar on the back on the number plate, and we got my logo on the back window as well. That is just fantastic, that is. Of course, you realise, Mr. Patreon Grace Mark, if you're watching this, the next thing I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to take one of the square bale wrappers and put that little logo right there onto the square bales because that would be very cool um or the and the round bales and well yeah pro well probably the square bales because those are the ones i use the most but um yeah anyway that's for another time we have done it we have completed our time here in ravenport this is all we're doing i'm not doing anymore that's it it's, it's game over and our next video will come from the it's gonna go back up right yes nice um, so we've got self-leveling system on this one. The, um, we're going to go on to be the Alps. That'll be the next video that you see from me. I'm not sure when I personally will be recording it because it's going to be a little ways from here. But I'll worry. I will worry about that. You don't need to. It'll be your next episode. Tomorrow it should be for you. This video here will have gone on longer than my normal timers. But um, that's so that we are able to start the one with the seasons one as quickly as possible so long as seasons has actually been released Let's see if i can get myself off of this testing out what this tractor can do in regards to jumps and everything um but yes if you've enjoyed the episode and you've enjoyed the series in general then please head down below and give us a like and if you really enjoyed it then please tell your friends all about me get them to come and watch as well that would be awesome and don't forget, if you've got any suggestions for future series, if you've got suggestions for things you'd like me to try in any of them, um, then please do consider joining our Discord channel. We've, uh, there's a link in the description down below for that one. Um, a lot of people on there, and it's a great place to post up uh, links and suggestions for me. I do get to see them all. I do read through them all. Um, some of them I will take on board, and some of them I will think, no, I don't think that's actually going to suit what I'm doing. Please don't be offended if I don't necessarily take you up on your idea. Um, most people aren't, but you do get one or two people every now and then who think that their idea is brilliant, and then when I don't use it, they get very upset. I have ideas for things that I'd like to do, and I'm always open to new suggestions and trying new things as well, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to implement every idea that is suggested. So just, just keep that in mind. Um, but, yo... The, Discord is the place to go. If, if you have anything that you would like me to look at, go to Discord. Because then, if I don't like it, I can sort of explain why I don't like it. And perhaps we can have a look at tweaking your idea so that it could be used. I do do that. I enter into some long discussions some days. Other days, I may not necessarily do very much. But anyway, that's that's up there. And, and uh, you, you can go and have a look. Description in... Uh, description. The uh, link is in the description. I'm loving this going through and just knocking all of these road signs flying. This is absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. Look at this. <laughs> uh, that, that's all I got time for. So until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.